world history students. I'm Miss Z, the time machine teacher. Welcome back to another year of AP World History. We're going to have an amazing time this year getting you ready for the college board exam in May. Before we get into what we are going to be doing this year, I want to introduce myself a little bit and let you know a little bit more about me. Most of you have probably met me because when we are in face-to-face -face school, I am also in the Learning Commons. I teach one period of AP World History and then I run the Learning Commons the rest of the day and have amazing time machine experiences. It all started the first year I was at Westside when one of my students said, I really wish that we had a time machine to travel back in time. And I said, why can't we have one? And that's how I became the time machine teacher. You have a part in the time machine as well because the time machine runs on imagination. So that's where you come in and that's what I'll need your help with this year. More details on that later. For now, we'll just say that the time machine experiences might be a little bit different this year because some of them will be with distance learning. Hopefully though, we can go back into the school building and have them in the learning commons as soon as it's safe to do so. A little bit more about me. This is my sixth year at Westside and I absolutely love being a wolf. I really love photography, so if you're into that, let me know because it's one of my passions. I love teaching and I love history. I have been reading several books over the summer and I can't wait to share some of the things that I've learned with you. I also really enjoy art, so hopefully we'll be able to do some artsy projects this year. And I love to travel. I can't wait to share with you some of the experiences that I've had as we learn about the topics of world history. Now let's talk about what you will be doing this year. This exam is difficult. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you it's easy because it's not. But if you study and you do your reading and you put in the effort, you'll be able to do a good job. Let's start by going over what is on the exam. You'll have 55 multiple choice in 55 minutes. Now if you do the math, you know that's not very long to do each multiple choice question. We will be practicing multiple choice questions throughout the year. Each one of the multiple choice questions will have a stimulus with it. Each question will have a stimulus connected with it, such as a primary source or a graph. That is why we spend so much time throughout the year going over primary sources, and it's very important for you to understand them. However, because you get such a short amount of time on the multiple choice, what I will tell you all year long is that if you get to the AP exam and you are not finished and you only have five minutes left of that 55 minutes, just go ahead and fill in what you can and guess. That's all you can do and hope for the best. I don't think College Board is really expecting you to get 55 done in 55 minutes. It's pretty impossible to do because there's so much reading, but that's why it's important to practice those primary sources throughout the year. Then you have 40 minutes to answer three short answer questions. We will be practicing this all year as well. I also have some videos about it to help you along. Of those three questions, one will probably be a secondary source, another will be a primary source, and another one will not have any stimulus with it. So those questions are kind of tricky because if you don't know anything about the topic, it's a little bit difficult to answer. But I will be telling you some tips and tricks throughout the year to get you ready for the short answer. Then you have a DBQ question. That one you get 60 minutes to complete. We will be practicing this one as well. A document-based question is where they give you six to seven documents that will help you answer a question. You use the documents to answer the question and write the essay. There's a very strict rubric that you have to follow in order to get all the points, but lucky for you, we're going to help you with that this year. And last but not least, you get 40 minutes to answer the LEQ or a long essay question. This one you usually get a couple of choices and you choose one to write about. Your multiple choice is worth 40% of the test. The short essay questions are worth 20%. The DBQ is worth 25% and the long essay is worth 15%. We'll focus mostly on the skills that you need to acquire in order to write these essays. The course breaks down into nine units. Also, we'll talk briefly about unit zero, which is everything that happens before 1200 CE. The exam will mostly be from units two through six. However, we will still cover the other units as well. Keep in mind that last year the exam was different in that the students only wrote a DBQ and it was shortened. Just remember that that was only for the students of 2020. You will be taking the exam in 2021 and yours is back to the full exam. <laughs> Therefore, if you see resources that are talking about only taking 
a DBQ exam, that does not apply to you. The most important thing with this class is doing the reading. That can be challenging for some of you. Some of you are not as fast at reading, but I'm here to tell you that if you practice, you will get better. And what's really great about the textbook that we use is it's at a college level. Therefore, it's going to prepare you for what you will face in college. If you get faster reading now, it will definitely benefit you later on. I will also be doing lives on YouTube to read with you on a weekly basis. So make sure you've subscribed and turned on the notifications so that you don't miss those. Also on YouTube, I will be doing review games and different weekly sessions that will help you with whatever we're covering in class. So stay tuned for those videos as well. Keep in mind, I already have several videos posted. There will also be a ton of other resources at your disposal this year. I have a digital notebook that you can use. It's down in the description below. Just make a copy and make it your own. Even if you're not a Westside student, you're more than welcome to use that notebook to keep yourself organized and to access the resources that I have in there. I will also, from time to time, be making some TikToks about AP World Word of the Day. I will try to make them on a daily basis, but it just kind of depends on the week and how busy it is. Keep an eye on Time Machine Teacher on TikTok so that you don't miss those. And if you're not on TikTok, I will also post them on Instagram under Time Machine Teacher. Any questions that you may have, you can reach out to me on those social platforms. You can also email me, and here's my email. All in all, it's going to be a little bit of a crazy year, but no matter what we face, we're in this together and we can help each other be successful on this exam. I guarantee that if you put in the work and effort now, it will pay off. That's it for a quick intro of AP World History. Congratulations, you've just skipped two grades and you're now in college. Isn't it exciting? Thank you so much for listening. I look forward to working with you on AP World History this year. Happy virtual learning.